Well, I, I, can I just? No, no, I don't, I'm, I'm, just, I'm so sorry. Can, oh my god, this is classically. Oh, 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 can I? Is it, can I? No, I'm. Can I just? Uh, what? Let me. Just, I don't, okay. Okay. Oh. Okay. Oh, can, oh, can I? Can I? No, can can I I'm gonna, okay. So all I'm trying to say. So I'm gonna say. Just one minute. Just one minute. Can I? 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 Can Um, guys, it's a, it's what do they call that? Like a red letter day or date? What is it called? Like when it's a good thing happened? This okay, morning? go ahead. Yeah, what does that mean, red letter day? Well, Sean, first of all, who's got a Wi-Fi signal? Yeah, who, somebody can Google do. that. Sean, what Google are you that. thinking? What are you thinking that why is this a great day? What's going on? Well, because uh, Ricky, who's sitting right next to me, his yeah. scab. Remember that huge? What's it called? A tumor or thing that he had? Oh, this is welcome back to remembering scabs. Uh, the, I'm your host. Yeah. And for the for the listener, Ricky is your your best friend, your buddy. Uh, yeah. Your buddy has got a, a terrible case of herpes constantly, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, he had that big. Um, what's it called? Like tumor, like benign tumor. Anyway, so he got it gouged out. It was massive, and now the, it's scabbed, and the scab started falling off, sure. and that's when my, my mouth starts to water. Like, yeah. you ever watch those videos with the earwax and stuff? Oh, yeah, like, yeah, scabs yeah. No, up? no, I we don't that watch stuff. any videos like about that. earwax. Do you? Y yeah. yeah. Or yeah. like the doctor, the pimple popper thing? Yeah, pimple popper, yeah. I know, it's incredible. Wait, wait, I think what? it's like, what? it's what? so Oh, that's a whole thing. Have you not seen those, Jay? What are you talking about? There's a show. Doesn't she have a show on, on like, Learning Channel or something called or Dr. Something pimple like that, Popper? Yeah. Dr. Pimple and, Popper, And yeah. it's this dermatologist, and she goes and she has people who have, like, extreme... Um, uh, like, like cysts. Growths and acne and cysts and shit, and she, like, gets rid of them and extracts them. It's... Yeah. Fascinating. Yeah, yeah, it's so great. She Hank, goes in so, so uh, sorry, listener. We're going to be a bit. Yeah. Um, where <laughs> is this? On I think on, on the television set on on the Learning Channel. Yeah, she has a whole thing. And if you look online, somebody t told me about this is it a, a television show with commercials and stuff. Like oh that. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you can YouTube you clips and you can YouTube too. it. You would be blown away at the millions of views that they get. I mean, yeah. And and the draw is just come and watch all the pus. Yeah. Come out. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. That's why you're tuning in. I think so. That's right. I think that there it's a whole community of people who just fucking are love it. obsessed I, with it. I love that. And also, but the earwax, like when people go in and get like like mounds of earwax out of somebody's Stop ear. Stop talking so to me like I know what you're talking about. <laughs> well, just like <laughs> It's like it's like when people like, it's like when people talk about taking freeways in certain places and they're like and then we were on the six oh five you know where it goes into I'm like no I don't man yeah, yeah. I don't Forget fucking it. know where that is yeah. so Sean there is a oh the earwax is a common well, thing where earwax yeah well you can you, a show about that too well, yeah no there's not a show but you can like YouTube videos of like people going in and and taking earwax out like yeah. doctors and stuff. Have you ever really? had, I, I had yeah. to have some removed. Uh, I went to the doctor once, this is 10 years ago, and they go, oh, you should go downstairs and see an ENT. You've got quite a lot of uh, buildup in your ear. True story. Not shocking, by the way. And yeah. I go in, how do you mean? Well, just, just um, listener, if you could see Will right now, I mean, he's just, no one needs to see him before noon on any day. Listen, I keep it very tight, as you know. And, and uh, so I go in there, and they go, yeah, and the guy takes it out. I kept it in a jar. Boof. In like a no little way. container because it was. I so, need to see yeah. that. Do you still have it? <laughs> oh God! Uh, I sold Someone it. woke up this little kitty cat. I sold it. <laughs> What's that, Sean? You want to see that? <laughs> Do you have the tumor from your herp herpetic friend? No, but uh, I, I I did. I had Ooh. all. <laughs> Did I use that right? Yeah, yeah right, that actually. is right. Actually, uh -huh. I did. <laughs> but yeah, as it fell off, my mouth started watering. I was like, oh, and then I picked some of it off. This is why tail. you love dumplings from Chin Chin, right? That's exactly right. You just cut it oh, open and it God, oozes don't out. Make a, yeah. Don't draw a comparison it's with some sort food. of like a little pod with meat on the inside of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just kind That's of exactly. open yeah. and watch it all Get it in come there. out. I feel yeah. bad for our guest. They've had to listen to potentially our most disgusting uh, <laughs> intro to the show ever. Better not be a classy person. Well, put it this way. I feel good about it because I feel like this person and I, we share this in common in that we both have Canadian origins. Oh, here we go. Um, 
I don't think that he grew up in Canada, but I know that he is a he's a card carrying Canadian. His parents are Canadian, so I think that he's probably got a pretty uh, uh, loose sense of humor about stuff like that, and can be and pretty easygoing. You know how how we are up there. Eh? Oh sure, yeah. Well, so yeah. you can talk about the gross stuff, and we're like, well, fuck, that's pretty gross there, bud. But uh, all right, <laughs> you know, not gonna get too bogged down by it. And uh, <laughs> but this guy's had he's lived here, and he's had so much success here. And he started making films. You know, it's funny. He had two films. His first two films opened within, I think, within maybe the same year, uh, over 30 years ago. One was a very much a sort of a, a comedy. Uh, the other one was much more dramatic. Uh, the, one, the dramatic film that he was in launched the careers of many young men. Uh, including Matt Damon, Chris O'Donnell, Ben Affleck, had a lot of young guns in this film. He then mm. went on to make just film after film after film. He was in uh, huge blockbuster uh, franchise films. He was in really cool, interesting indie films. And then for a moment it felt like, it almost felt like I wasn't. We weren't seeing him as, in as many oh, films we're for a minute. We're going to get into that part of his life. We yeah. <laughs> sure will. But then he came back bigger than ever. Wait, if this is who I think it is. Some would say as big as a whale. Guys, it's none other than Brendan Fraser. No Good Lord. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. Brendan Fraser. Well, what an honor. What a pleasure. You are a busy man right now, huh? Yes. Um, But not too busy. I mean, you're up early doing a podcast with us. It's Nothing could be busier. Happy to drop in. Are you in L.A. right now? No, no, I'm in New York. I live in okay. upstate New York. Oh, so it's not so early. No, no. Uh, Brendan Fraser joining us from upstate New York. Dude, uh, what an honor and pleasure to meet you. Um, and it just, uh, I got to say, it's one of those great stories because there aren't often a lot of, there are a lot of feel-bad stories around, and you got to kind of look for the feel-good stories, and yours certainly is a feel-good story in watching you kind of all of a sudden just, I'm sure, and you can tell us, uh, everybody's like, wow, that's a, even me saying, oh, you've had this sort of resurgence or this comeback, and you're kind of, I'm, tell me what that experience is like, because do you feel like, hey, motherfuckers, I've been here the whole time? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I guess that's the epistolistic question. Did I leave or did it leave me? I, I, I just all I know is I'm here now, and yeah. I'm right. happy to be. And yeah. you probably were uh, working. I mean, I, I, I've I, I've gone through a, a period that was less active than periods before or periods after. And and uh, but all that was was that well, I was a working actor. I was still yeah. paying my bills. I just wasn't in vehicles that were got a whole no, lot of notoriety. And and I was just lucky that I was in some before and in some afterwards. But always kind of working. Was that was that what was what the sort of perceived uh, uh, valley was? I. I've always kept busy. That's yeah. for sure. I mean, I, I, um, I, I don't think there was a year when I didn't have something. Yeah, to exactly. Do. Yeah. Um, it's just the stuff was so huge before and huge after. Yeah, there was a real proliferation when I came out of the gate pretty early, and um, I think I was even in competition with myself on some uh. weekends, <laughs> you know, in the genius of release dates. Wow. And all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who is that guy? Right. Oh, it's me. I was so busy. <laughs> So oh big. God. How was that? Did you did you did you enjoy that um, that that level of busyness and notoriety and and like the the uh, another version of Brendan that was someone other than who you had grown up being? You know that like the public's version. I, you know, I, I kind I guess I kind of had blinders on. I didn't really um, pay that much attention to the result of what I was doing. Yeah. So much as I was doing what I was doing to keep busy. I, I, I'm, I guess the, the answer is um, I was never a real big party guy. I never went out. I stayed away from, you know, glitzy events and that kind of thing. Because yeah. I, I had to be at work in the morning. And on top of that, I'm also very, very boring. You would have seen Jason in a lot of those glitzy events had you gone. <laughs> yeah, I would have been a lot of yeah, high fives coming yeah. from me. Oh. Yeah. Dude. So you didn't miss much anyway, Brendan. So I don't anyway. think I did either, but, yeah. but I, you know, I was too busy trying to stay, <laughs> keep my head in the game for whatever I, had, I yeah. was up to. I should have hung out with you. <laughs> yeah, I, I once ran into you, Brendan, like, uh, it was at a, I don't know, I think it was a, an event honoring Steve Martin, maybe? Or, oh, I can't remember where it was. It was an event, and I just, it was, 
I just couldn't I couldn't believe I was meeting you. I was like, oh my god, it's Brendan Fraser, and you were the was nicest. It Saturday Night Live. No, no, it was it was in town here in in Los Angeles, and uh, you were just so nice. And uh, we we oh, just hung out briefly for two seconds backstage chatting. And he's got no clearly, memory of this. Sean. Yeah, yeah, really like the mark got, on him, Sean. Yeah. Jesus, <laughs> didn't make quite an impact as you did on me. <laughs> I, I should tell you also, I was dropped on my head a lot in my career. So sure. Wow. Had wow. you shown up with that tumor in a jar, Sean, you wouldn't have forgotten that. <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. You know? Yeah, that's what, that really leads. Yeah. So, uh, Brendan, let's go way back a little bit. So, as I mentioned, that um, wh what sort of uh, what's your connection to Canada? Your parents are Canadian. Did you spend any time there? Did you grow up there yeah. at all? Uh, I was born in the U.S., so I'm a Canadian born abroad. Yeah, dual heritage. Um, but Canada definitely claims me as local boy done good. Um, yeah, which part of Canada? Uh, Ottawa, uh, Ontario, Toronto. Uh, my father. My, I, have, I have family in Vancouver, uh -huh. in BC, and oh, all my, over the my, place. My father uh, hails from the Maritimes, and my mom uh, was a cowgirl in Saskatchewan. No way. Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. A Canadian. Wait cowboys. a second. Hang on one second. Your dad's from the Maritimes. What part of the Maritimes do you know exactly? CBI in Nova Scotia. Oh, from Nova Scotia. Wait till Eli hears about this. <laughs> yeah. Our buddy Eli, who, uh, you know, right, he just stopped combing somebody's hair uh, <laughs> mid mid brush. He's with his his dad. Why is that where he's from? He's from Halifax, Nova Scotia. When he finds out that Brendan's dad is from uh, Nova Scotia, he's going to. You know what he'll say? He'll it. say, Is that right? Oh, is that right? Hey, fuck. You know oh. what? I think I, I know. Say, who's dad. your father's father? Yeah. That's who is guy. he? Oh, yeah. Because everyone him. knows everyone. Yeah. I see. Him Everyone's down there, he works at the post office with the other guy who works at the post <laughs> yeah, office. Yeah, eh? yeah. Uh, so, Wait, isn't maritime like a, a, a nautical term? Nice, <sighs> the islands, yeah, <sighs> and the town's called maritime. No, no the, the, the area is no, called it's the not maritime. M A R Y, second word, girl. T -I -M -E. Yeah, it's not it's married. The... Oh, now it's maritime <laughs> during the week. I work for my boss, but come Friday, it's maritime. <laughs> That's M E R R Y. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Christmas. That's berry time. Uh, so, I thought... <laughs> Sean. Oh, I for apologize, fuck's sake. Brendan. Sean, you know that your uh, your college just lost their accreditation. You know that, right? <laughs> They've just been A like completely. They just been stripped of everything. So, Brendan. Yeah. So, Brendan, you're up there in Canada. You're, you're up freezing in freezing your nards off, and you're and thinking, you move... I want to be. On no, he moved. Now he moves down to you. Move down to the states, and Gret, you go to high school in the states. Yes, don't make mm -hmm. like you've done a bunch of research. I have. My 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 father's work was with Tourism Canada, which is right. a defunct branch of the government now. Wherein his job was basically to sell Canada. So there are. Yeah, sounds like spy work to me. Go ahead. I know. I I mm -hmm. could be a perfect cover. If you for, put a half a beer in him. I bet you get a lot of stories. I, Go know, ahead, I tried that. I <laughs> seriously, dude, I did. I tried. Right. He, he didn't say anything mm -hmm. about it. You know, he's very, very boring that way. Mm -hmm. Um, we traveled every three, four years, so there's many postings. So that's why <laughs> they lived in the United States when I was born, and they moved around parts of Canada too. So, Ottawa, um, in the '70s, he was posted in Holland. We lived there for four years, and then. Um, Seattle, Washington. Think back. Did you ever hear sirens consistently? The last sound you think heard back, before you left back, places. Think back. Yeah, think back. If you heard sirens, <laughs> were you guys living in the middle of the night a lot? Yeah. <laughs> were you hustled no in the van? We'll <laughs> sidebar this. We'll see, yeah. Well, I was just going to say a lot of BC and Holland. There's also a real weed trail here, Brendan. That I don't oh, think. That <laughs> good, Will. Good. We're going to sure. crack this, Brendan. <laughs> Start started early. Um, yeah. So then, so then, okay, so, so you're moving all around and you decide you, and, and you're like, you're drawn to acting, to theater, to yeah. what, what was that first engagement? I was going to high school in Toronto um, okay. at Upper Canada College and I wasn't a very good student at all. You were um, at UCC? Correct. Yeah. Guilty. Wow. Did you go to the same high school as, as um, like Eric McCormick and Mike Myers and all those people? No. I don't know that. Okay. Um, Sean, oh, I think okay. they went to, I want to say North Toronto. I can't remember. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. Sorry, keep going. That was the 80s. That was me doing school. I was a bad student and I was, I found home. I was, wait, Brendan, how old a gentleman are you? I'm 54. Okay, so we're around the same age. Yeah, how did you guys not bump into each other? I'm asking a question now, but I've never been this famous and unsalaried at the same time, so a lot doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> <laughs> Well, speaking, so, speaking of which, um, 
how many I'm going to guess right now you're you're dealing with you got a bunch of scripts that have been sent your way and you've mm -hmm. read I bet you there's two or three right now yeah you're looking at two or three things right now that are like what I have a chance to do these things right now how, but but they conflict and I got to pick one like are you mm -hmm. are we in that are we in that moment right now um no I've lived that before I've I've felt I've had well, that buddy yeah, tuck yeah. in Which, buckle up which one, which, which is the best choice to make and you, who will you disappoint if you don't do the following? And who can you, can you tell us what that was? Like, is, is there one oh, that you can gosh. share now? It was years ago. Years it was ago. years ago when I've, I've been in that, you know, sort of right. dynamic of yeah. the industry. But right now, no, it's, it's quiet. Right now, yeah. I'm, I don't have a job. Yeah, you know what they say about the quiet? It's right before the storm. That's right. <laughs> well, he's buckle right, Jason. Up. That's right. Buckle, yeah. buckle up. Get a good up. set of reading glasses. Yep. yep. Fuel up. Get a lot of sleep right now while you can. Or I'll read them to you. I can read yeah, the scripts. Fuel. To you there you go. Know. You got your fuel. It says Guinness on it. I'm hoping it's coffee. It's, it's a Guinness coffee cup. I've never seen that. I know. I like it's that. Earl Grey tea. <laughs> Earl Grey tea. Okay. <laughs> Canadian. So, so you decide you're going to be an actor, and you what? You move. You go. I'm going to go to L.A. or I'm going to go to New York. What do you do? Well, yeah, that was in Toronto. Did that. My family lived in Seattle. Um, Seattle. Seattle. Yes, in uh, the Northwest. Um, I didn't make it back for grade 13 because I didn't have the grades and uh -huh. my father didn't have the money. Uh -huh. So they said, no, honey. And so I had to make my decision <laughs> as a kid of, I don't know, 17 years of age at that time. And I, and I, I knew that I felt like I belonged. I felt like I was in a community. You know, when you're doing a play, you, yeah. you have a tribe for a short while. You know the drill. And I wanted to pursue that in a, a way. So I, I went and I got the last possible audition on the Labor Day weekend, like the Friday before this new semester started on the following Tuesday that year, 100 years ago, at Cornish College of the Arts. And um I, I can't remember, but I auditioned and I didn't hear anything. And then on the Tuesday morning, I called to ask, hey. Um, do you guys like it? Am I in? What? And somebody did like one of these in the office. Like, Just <laughs> uh, what's your name again? <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Fraser? No, it's, it's Fraser. Fraser. Fra yeah, you're in. Can you come now? Yeah. Nice. Wow. So I got accepted. Uh, wow. Yeah. Uh -huh. And the next thing I knew, I was signing my life away in like Pell Grants and student loans. And this is in Seattle, yeah. In Seattle, and I yeah. started I started training in a four-year program in conservatory, um, you know, after school. I did that for four years. That was mm -hmm. very good. Got a degree and was in an internship in a theater then called Intamon Theater. Um, that was a wild summer. Um, the, the Russians showed up for the oh, Goodwill yeah. Games, it was called. And uh, oh, the, the Goodwill Games. The whole game. entire Soviet company from Moscow brought three sisters. And I mean everything. All the little babushkas and all their sets and oh. uh, their laundry, everything. And like laundry. descended on his theater. We had a wild summer. I was basically just a de facto taxi driver. They all wanted to know where to go and buy stuff. Yo, me drugie, ya hachu kubit video magneteophone. Which is roughly translated, my friend, I'd like to buy a, a VCR. Okay. Right, sure. <laughs> That's what I did that summer. And that ended. I had a great time and I needed to figure out, all right, well, here I am, like 20 years old. And then straight down to LA? Well, I had a, I had a scholarship um, that I'd earned to do graduate study if I wanted to. And I did, maybe. But it was at uh, SMU in Dallas. Yeah. Sure. And... Yeah. Uh, the new semester wasn't going to start, so I needed to get there. So I left Seattle, drove down the coast, and I, I stopped in Hollywood in California with the Mistake. sort of ignorant, yeah, yeah. ignorant Thanks idea that um, I would, I yeah, I'd make a little cash in this pilot season thing or whatever that was before I went to grad school the following semester. But um, that never happened. I met casting directors, and the ball started. I got an agent, and I went to work. You know, fortunately, pretty quickly. Um, wow! Never made it to SMU. Never made it to SMU. I wrote him a did letter. You have, did, you have, did you have? Did you have friends here? Did you have somebody you knew? Did you have a place to land? Yeah, no. I had a friend from college who whose mother had an apartment building. We shared a room in the valley by the Great. airport. 
Um, but, you know, I had a landing place. But other than that, no, I was just living out of my car. Basically. Jason uses a, an airport in the valley all the time. <laughs> <laughs> somebody somebody said uh, LEX to him the other day. I mean, and he said, what's that? <laughs> Laxative. <laughs> I'm plenty regular. What the? Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. So you're in L.A. totally uh, on your own, basically, and starting from scratch. And one thing leads to another, like literally like maybe a play commercials episodics mm -hmm. feature here we go i got cast in um a pilot for um castle rock because mm -hmm. that's rob reiner's company right yep. um, yeah called my old school from the producers of um the wonder years and it was about college kids yeah you know? and uh it didn't get picked up but that was fine because i needed the cash anyway and sure Mm. I'd done some auditions. I went in and read for a movie called School Ties. Um, sure. Yep. Didn't get hired. They were doing a big drift net search for whoever their David was going to be. Um, then I did get hired to go work with Martin Sheen in Pittsburgh on a jail movie about a guy who was wrongly accused and his father comes and breaks him out because that's really what Martin does really well, you know, fight Ooh. the man. Um, yeah. That was exciting. So I cut my teeth there. I yeah. worked in a real jail. That was Exciting and interesting and a little bit scary at the same time. Sure. Uh -huh. I got mistaken for a prisoner because <laughs> oh, no. I was wearing the same thing. That was scary. That sounds painful. Dax and I made that prison movie. Yes. Yeah, we shot You're that. going to prison, a great movie. Let's go to prison. Yeah, we, we shot it. Let's in... go to prison. No, you're you're right, though. It was originally called You Are Going to Prison. That's the version I read. Turned it down. Then you did it. Uh, that we sounds about it. right. No. That sounds about right. Yeah. And we went to Joliet. We also shot in real prison. Uh, Shepard and I did. And uh, it, it's weird. Uh, being in an actual prison, uh, let yeah. me just say, by the way, anybody in prison listening to the, by the way, if anybody <laughs> <laughs> listens to our podcast in prison. That's a good question. You think they've got Wi-Fi in prisons? They can't, right? Or maybe they do? I'm, like, I, are you allowed to? I think different securities, like, you know, levels. Depends on, on, depends on what wing you're in. Yeah, I think yeah. so, right? Yeah. <laughs> I, get, I don't listen. It makes sense. Look, guys, let's workshop this. Brendan, what do you think? Do you think that they have Wi Fi in prison? I think they have everything there. Yeah. No, but I'm, I'm not talking about like muling in the Wi Fi, you know, yeah. but like literally, like that's, well, yeah, you can have a TV, you can have Wi Fi, and mm -hmm. you can have. Uh, you think guys are muling in routers up, up, up the rectum? <laughs> do you see the routers come in all shapes and sizes? Oh, now? guys. <laughs> what? <laughs> Fuck. Wait, what's <laughs> muling? What is muling? What's <laughs> muling? Again, another sidebar for us. Okay. You know, okay. when people okay. bring stuff keeping in, a list? You know, like when you're like when you're getting on a plane from Bogota and you have to you swallow like 15 or 20 <laughs> oh, oh, condoms muling. filled <laughs> with got cocaine. It. Got it, got it. <laughs> you know? Um, That's called muling. Anyway, guys, I've heard enough people already this morning. So, Brendan, so you're not muling stuff into prison, but you're shooting a thing with Marty Sheen, and then you come back and you... They what? They go, hey, we've we we've re we thought about it. We want you for school. No, times. Um, there was a new casting director. It was a shakeup in the Paramount structure. Uh -huh. um, Stanley Jaffe was going to direct the wow. picture, and then I think he was the studio boss, if I'm not mistaken. And then he stepped down to be a producer, and then Sherry Lansing came in to produce the picture, and she was running the studio at the time. And so it was like a new day, and so they started casting again. And I went in again, like just like when I got into college, the last absolute appointment and i read for a new casting director who uh, said you should meet sherry i did i read she said um uh, i want to test you and i thought first like an exam like you know yeah. i thought sharpen pencils the whole you thing. thought like and, you thought like sobriety test right then yeah there, exactly. just straight no line what hands she's like what are you doing tomorrow i'm like oh, i don't know I'm doing <laughs> so i went and i did a screen test wow with uh with matt damon and um you tested with damon Yes, yes, yes. We did like one or two scenes, if my memory serves. No kidding. He was so good. I mean, I would never got hired if it wasn't for him. Seriously. Yeah, he used to be so good. I, I agree with you. And then, he, and then he it used just to be great. film by film. Yeah, he slowly, slowly deteriorated. All the talent atrophy. <laughs> we and just, now we're left with what we got now. And now, um, and we like it. We like yeah, it fine. It's fun. Fun it's to fun, look at. And it's fun. Um, yeah, fun to listen to, but yeah, but his garbage. what's he ever done? Yeah. Very little. He's he well, did now, school ties, and then all downhill. <laughs> you know what, Brendan? You know what Matt Damon's been relegated to? He's been relegated go. to fourth place in the uh, uh, Octquirtle uh, yeah. Daily Puzzle Game, mm -hmm. which and every wait, day. I, local news. I think he's my neighbor. I, he lives up. Yes, he is. Yeah, he is your neighbor. According to the rag. 
the, the, that reports on if a raccoon gets sick. That, you know, and I know same. you know him from way back, but don't approach him these days. Yeah, he's very cantankerous away. now. Yeah. No, 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 well, no. he's just had such bad luck with the morning games. He tries this puzzle game that we're in, and um, it's been he's tough. He's got to change his starter word. He does have to change his starter. He's had a tough time. He keeps going with vowels. you got to go to consonants. <laughs> so oh so <laughs> you do school ties. This movie puts you on the map and it was kind of like i said in the intro it was a it was a one-two punch you do school ties with which uh did quite well at the box office i mean it wasn't a smash hit but it was but it did quite well it was well received and then you do encino man with paulie shore which again also oh, yes yeah, made a so ton good. of money it was and was a big hit especially you know i looked it up compared to its box office both these films were legitimate hits uh for the makers of the film and this is like a this is a heck of an intro to to entertainment. You have two back to back really successful films. Was it just on after that? Once the the this for the release of both these things, was that the moment Jason described where it was just yeah, like it was wide collars, Ferraris, uh, no, no, but like everything was Vegas. <laughs> oh, yeah, a bunch of little small lap dogs. dogs, yeah, lap dogs you and need jacuzzis, a dog. bonbons. Yeah. <laughs> Broads. Broads everywhere. All this time I've had a Yorkshire Terrier in my lap, and you didn't know. Did you have it the whole time? Yes. Listener, we just saw a Yorkshire Terrier run through the shot. Do you know that dog? It's my dog. It's supposed Pee-wee. to be in your house? All right. Yeah, that's Pee-wee. She's the security. Pee-wee. Beware. Uh-huh. So, B-phrase. Yes. Uh, <laughs> nice. You, I don't know. We so, when those, so when those movies hit, was it kind of like, how did yeah. you process that? Because it, if, if it's your first two and they're... Did you just think, oh, this is how this goes. I'll be set. In a way, I did. I mean, I, I, I wasn't so naive that I thought, well, everybody does this. Um, I know they don't. I, I knew that this was a good um, entree, a good calling card. And um, I think if you're making diverse choices, then people are bound to pay a little bit more attention. You're like, wait, no, you're a comedy guy. No, you're a drama guy. You can't uh, right. be both. But right. in this case, I... I guess lightning struck or something, and I was fortunate that way. And, and then I went on to, to do yeah uh, a bunch of a good lot more. stuff. In those yeah. days, they were yeah. called independent films. You yeah, know, sure. Now they're dependent. Low budgets that they were. Yes, I know. Like independent of what? <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. Independent of a business daddy letting you have distribution, or <laughs> <laughs> independent of someone breathing down your neck, making creative choices from far, far away from behind a desk. It was not right. Like Maybe, but you know. I, anyway, so. I, I was keeping busy in that whole world. That's for right. sure. Yeah. Right, right. And then, uh, but then, so we go through that sort of working actor, staying busy, all that stuff. And then, uh, we do we jump? Will I don't want to? I don't want to jump your your, your no, timeline no, on your questions no, no, here. No, but okay. uh, then Darren Aronofsky calls. Yeah. yeah. Or or did you find it and call him? Which is the which is the whale? Yeah. Yes. A lot. A lot. Uh, a lot happened. Uh, life and career and ups and downs and the stuff that we all go through and yeah. mm-hmm. grow and learn from and all that. And that's great. Um, and um, I did hear from Darren and in, initially the word on the street was Darren's going to make a movie and would you like to meet him? The answer is yes, absolutely. Um, I would, you know, anybody would carry his bag. And, yeah. Um, I was, creatively intimidated when I first met him sure. in his offices in um, Chinatown. That was in January of 2020. Um, wow. But he, he, and he, he was really forthcoming about the part. He said, it's about, I didn't know anything other than it's about a guy who's been living alone and he's been, he's been overeating. He's been harming himself that way. And whether he means to or not is, you know, up for interpretation. And he has a strained relationship with his daughter and he has an epiphany that he, if he doesn't reconnect with her, it's, his very soul is at stake and that's about all i knew i mean uh, and darren said i need to cast an actor first of all who can play the part but at the same time we'll be able to create charlie from the outside in with and he was said we have to do it with prosthetics um and he'd worked with adrian moreau several times previously it was fantastic so good at his job as a makeup artist yes um, yeah and uh because it was, you know, January 2020, uh, COVID was <laughs> you know, looming and, you know, March rolled around after we did a reading of it. Yeah. We all went home for a while, clearly. Um, yeah. But uh, I got hired I, to work with Steven Soderbergh 
um, again, I, I, I worked with him back in the day um, on a series for Showtime called Fallen Angels. And they were like these shorts that were being directed anyway. But he called up to play uh, the bag man in um, uh, No Sudden Move with Don Cheadle. And yeah. Really great cast. And uh, Darren texted me and he sent this research material and, and uh, he was kind of like, you know, get on it. And I didn't know if I was hired or not. I had to actually ask him. I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm sorry, did I get the part? And he's like, yes, you did. Now get to work. <laughs> um, so I was like, great. And uh, from there, um, we started in um, January of 2021, rehearsing for The Whale for three weeks, wow. which is great because A24 is very filmmaker and actor friendly, mm-hmm. um, supportive. They do everything. Like everything they touch is works. It, it, you see a twenty four. It's eye opening. You know, you want to you want to know what they're up to. They take they take fair creative risks, and mm-hmm. you know, I guess financial ones too. But it's not my wheelhouse. But yes, they're they're really great. And so we, like everyone at that time, started working with all the protocols and safety measures yeah. and everything. And um, we were about to start shooting, and then I got COVID. Oh wow. <laughs> So uh, that was... Did you have an easy time with it? Were you one of the lucky ones? I lost my taste and my smell, and I was really stupider than I normally am. Like, I had brain fog, you know, like, it's sleeping a lot. Yeah. But we started. We got going. We worked under... Everyone worked under existential threat. (laughs) Will there be a tomorrow? We all felt the same way. And it it really added to the, the... I think the film in a great way. And what kind of research did he send you? Because it, it was a play, was it not? That's right. Yeah. Oh, it was? Samuel D. Hunter had produced this at um, New Horizons in 2012, where Darren first saw it and then optioned it from him. Oh, wow. And they developed it for 10 years. Oh, wow. And uh, Sam Hunter adapted <laughs> his own stage play for the screen also. First time. I mean, not bad. <laughs> That's his first first uh, screenplay? First one. Seriously. Wow. Yeah. Wow. First wow. one. Like, wow. Um you know, talent doesn't doesn't go away. I guess they say no. Well, you know that that one clip of you well, sometimes it never so- shows up at all. Go ahead, John. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> perfect timing. The, the yeah. clip of you where um, <laughs> the clip of you where you were in the audience. I don't know where it was watching a screening of of the whale, and you had this unex- what seemed like an unexpected standing ovation. And it, you got that so was emotional. Venice, and that was I got emotional watching you get emotional. And I hadn't even seen the movie yet, but just that clip was so oh, powerful. Cool. Just that's to see cool. you standing up receiving all of those accolades. It was really, really cool to see Thank that. You. That that was um that's a core memory for me now. Mm-hmm. What I was looking at is twelve hundred Italians who you don't see are all screaming and crying. So it's kind of infectious, I think. Yeah. 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 Everyone has to sort of like mild group hysteria i think it okay. goes on for long enough i was trying to get out of the and darren's like no take a bow and he's the boss so I, I, <laughs> yeah uh That's what great. was it so so the conversation so it was a combination uh as far as the look of the whale which uh for those who don't know is about uh someone who's very very overweight yeah yes um and consequently uh homebound right correct um it, so the conversation was, uh, it was, was it going to be all prosthetics or what, did that, that kind of evolve into, well, you know, Darren, I think I can, I can put on X number of these pounds practically. Mm-hmm. And then we kind of augment with the, with, the, with the makeup. How did that, those conversations go? I had to meet the guy halfway, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. On paper, it says he's 600. That's just a number, 600 sure. pounds. I, the research that he'd sent was documentary footage, was interviews what you know i mean it, the point is is the man has serious mobility issues he can't get up off of his couch mm-hmm. and without it being a herculean effort which was important as a plot point to the film if you come see it you'll understand why but i uh i guess i just had to go with what i had and try and meet the character more or less halfway i think and what did um, that involve for you practically well four hours of makeup in the morning um wow. you know that we're all i'm look I, I'm an actor, and you are too. I love my job. I don't have a problem. I can sleep when you're dead, you know. And yeah. and and besides, Adrian was there an hour before and an hour after. Right. So, you know, I'm not going to cry anyone any tears. But, um, yeah, it was an extensive process to uh, just be patient, be 
um, a patient to patient. But but meeting him halfway meant that you had to you had to bulk up and you had to work on your diet and and you had to add things. What was that process like? And did it ever feel scary? We had that conversation. We decided, you know what? You, you, the concern was, Brandon, don't go and lose weight now because then the prosthetics won't work because they were created yeah. um, with a scan because we couldn't get together and right. pour the goop on your face and make a mold, you know? Wow. So uh, the producer came in and he held an iPad up to me in my driveway, you know, 15 feet away from each other. And that data <sighs> went, to Mont- went to Montreal and Adrian created Charlie virtually, which is important because the body itself becomes a, a texture map. You can create clearly anything. That man, he had control over the size of the pores, the placement of them, little anomalies in the skin, stretch, all that stuff. And and it skips wow. a step in the regular process, which is sculpting by hand, compounding and all that. So it was interesting because this is, I'm pretty sure like the future of how we're going to be doing prosthetics from this point forward. I mean, wow. it, and it, it's, it's seamless. It's seamless. I mean, I had been, I did a movie called um, Bedazzled, a Harold Ramis picture. Oh, yeah. And I, I was in five or six different full-on prosthetic makeups. And I went back and looked at him again. That was Matthew Mungle's work, and he's fantastic. He's since retired. He's a great guy. And um, you can you can still see, like, you know, it looks more handmade. You know, yeah. you you, uh, you suspend your disbelief to, mm. to buy into um, what you're looking at. And with The Whale and Charlie, it's not a digital creation at all. It's been wrongly um, reported that it is. It's not. I mean, with the exception of maybe a seam on a bib that got taken out in post. Right. Or if the fabric was acting acting up on a yeah, it doesn't shirt. Get, that doesn't count. That doesn't count. No, that it doesn't. Count. I mean, but seriously, otherwise it was, you know, analog, um, an actor in costume. Well, I think that there are ways that you do, I certainly as actors, and Jason, you can probably speak to this. I mean, all, all the all the surgery that you've yeah. had, do you find that that is just kind of like like more permanent makeup? Is that what you look at? It? <laughs> it's is more it? permanent, but there we do have to do a lot of digital removals of some yeah. of the staples. Uh-huh. Uh, sure, because but, they but, will but catch it cuts light. down time yeah. in the yeah. chair. Yes. Yeah. Wait, Brendan. Let me ask you. Let me ask you a question. So, you you've had a very long, uh, complicated relationship, not with acting because you've always been consistent in what you do, but with show business. Where where do you where do you feel about? How is your relationship with show business now in terms of like, do you find, did you, do you find yourself like having conflicting feelings about it, about the way that the way that the business works and all that stuff? Or that it's you, how it's changed. Or how it's changed or how you, have you learned stuff or, or do you oh, feel, yeah. are you cynical? Are you, I don't know. Yeah. Um, I, I've, I've been through many iterations of the business. I mean, I, I, I white knuckled it for 20 years or so, mm. and, uh, you know, I saw a lot of things. We all did. Um, the, the advent of everything kind of going to horse and cart to com- internal combustion engine around 2009 yeah. with with a movie call, uh, that I did, um, which was the beta for Avatar. It was called Journey to Center of the Earth. Oh, and yeah. It was in 3D, you know, yeah. and that technology right. was being battle-tested along with those cameras, and that went... To New Zealand and uh, James Cameron, you know, then made Avatar from those. So I, I say this because you know we all kind of went from a sort of analog world to a digital world, and that really changed the business a lot too. Suddenly, um, anything anything is possible, and yeah. it, it upped the stakes in terms of what we can do and what we will accept about what we're seeing. Then that changed again, of course. So here we are now in 2023, and all of these slick images can be created on the relative cheap mm-hmm. um, for anything you want to do. And we find ourselves in a place where you, you have to uh, you have to differentiate yourself. You have to you have to, you have to get back to storytelling. I think yeah. you know for just all the bells and whistles are great, and I love that stuff. I really do. But you have to get back to you know the one two threes of an actor. What do I want from right. this? You know, how am I going to get it? What's the obstacle? Who's what tactic will I use? And then cross your fingers. And you know, when I when I was younger, well, when I was younger, the game was so much different as an actor than it is now. Right? When you were, you know, in the eighties and nineties or whatever, it was here's my picture and resume. I got to bug my agent. I go on an audition. I sit and wait for the phone to ring, and that's it. Now. You know, I, if people say, well, you know, I'll, I'll my sister say, hey, a friend of my daughter's wants to get into the business. What's your advice? 
you know, it's like you almost have to be everything now. You have to be a writer, producer, director, actor. You have to create your own stuff on YouTube or create your own content. Sean, or Sean we, t we, we talked about it the other night. You and I right. talked about it. Yeah. We talked about, wow, how how hard it would be. Sean and I were both saying, God, it'd be so hard studying as an actor right now. Yeah. I'm sorry, guys. Let me that's, no, go. Don't, that's all good. Pee-wee, you're fired. Pee-wee. <laughs> you got to get Pee-wee back. Hey. Poor dog just lost his job. But we were talking about the idea, of, right, Sean, that it would be so hard if you were starting today. As an actor, like you know, you, you get a job, uh, you know, on a, on a streamer or, or, or a network or something, and, you know, nothing goes. It doesn't seem like it. Maybe it does, but it does, nothing goes for 100 episodes anymore. So to get a gig as an actor, that's the life. You go gig to gig, but it seems like it's less and less. Like you get six episodes of something, and then you have to pound the pavement to find... Mm. another gig in between these short, short, short runs, and they seem to be getting shorter and shorter. But my point is, my question is, does oh, any of is that, one. do yep. you do this? Here it comes. Um, <laughs> do you do this? <laughs> does any part of you want you to? You got nominated for your question asking <laughs> abilities. Oh, nominated. yeah, sorry, Brendan. You know that of the three of us, Sean yeah. was nominated for host of the year last host year. Host of the year. Wow. They actually they broke yeah. up the threesome. Yeah. They just they singled yeah. him out and said, yeah. "No, he's clearly the best yeah. at interviewing, and asking and questions." And you got a front row seat to, up. As to why. Yeah. yeah. So check this out, Brendan. Yeah. Sean <laughs> got my vote. Which is the worst. So which out of the three of us is the worst one to pick? Me, but anyway, my question. No, I you guess. know you didn't win. <laughs> okay, it was just to follow up. There was not a win there, and the following year they corrected their mistake, and it's now the three of us. So, <laughs> but, yeah. check this out, Brendan. Go. <laughs> <laughs> Never to be heard of again. <laughs> heard from again, me. But my point is, does uh -huh. any of that? And, and forgive me if you are into that, and I just don't know. But does any of you want to be? <laughs> How many times have you said that in your life? <laughs> <laughs> forgive me if you are into this, but. I, <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. No, but I do want to know. Does any of those other facets in, inspire you, want you to kind of do any of those other things, write, direct, produce, star, all of those things at the same time? Or you're like, you know what? I like staying in this one lane of being an actor. Yeah, I'm going to stay in my lane for okay. now. I mean, I, I also am spectacularly lazy and somewhat of a Luddite too, so... Um, I, and there's so many good directors that I, I want, yeah, I want yeah. to work with. And also, I mean, I have a lot to... to to still um, explore. Yeah, and and with that, so 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 staying, uh, you want to stay focused purely on the on the acting, which is totally admirable, and 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 you really want to work with all these directors. So, given this presumed moment of uh, uh, relevance again, which we're always all striving for, is just like let me get an at bat. So. There's a great at bat, you know, coming up here with all this great, well, well deserved notoriety. Do you have a, um, I'm not going to ask you for your goal or your plan or to the extent that you even have thought about that, but you've, you've accomplished so much and you've been in the business for such a long time. How would you like this next stage of mm -hmm. your time in the business to go if you allow yourself to dream a little bit? Um, I want to work in features consistently again mm -hmm. i have been really happy with you know the streaming experiences and doing short projects like uh, uh trust for mm -hmm. fx with um with donald sutherland and danny boyle directed that and i mean there's really exciting things to be done we all know that um yeah. in, in um streaming but to sean's point yeah it can be really limiting at the same time too which has its pros and cons for for whatever's next guys i it's an open road yeah. um you just want to stay working yeah but in essentially features, yeah. i do i mean i still always have this feeling i'm that kid back in seattle and someone's going to walk up to me and hand me a dish towel and say, yeah, hey, yeah. Get back. for sure and is it yeah. and is the draw is the sorry is the is the draw but because you have a, a real excitement to morph into characters that are not you like is that like a pure acting passion or is it to be a part of a team effort to build a film under the tutelage of some really talented director like what what's what's the thing that really excites yes, you that, about it all yes both of those those are excellent points that and also i'd love to do revisit things that really were um exciting that i got to do uh like the mummy um you know those big mm. franchise pieces i love that those really those really i mean it's just becoming apparent Really, I mean, the gravity of it is really 20 whatever years later is just awakening with me now. You'd like to do another sequel to The Mummy? 
Oh, are we making yeah. news right now? Yeah, that's, that's there it. Is. Oh We've no! I've already it. said. Look, I'm, I've been I've been screaming this from the rooftops for ten years. Give I, us so, something new. Give us something fresh. Like <laughs> that's all I got, guys. I, I don't I don't have. I news think you to want. I think you, I heard you say you want to do school ties too. <laughs> what about, can, would that what be about, fair to say? What about what about the daddy? What about daddy, daddy too? <laughs> no, dude, the mummy and then uh, the daddy. daddy. Listen, Jason, keep up, okay? We're we're, we're doing oh, loose word it. association. It's just it's not even clever and or witty. Uh, but you'd like to get into some sort of a franchise, potentially the Mummy. Uh, bring it back! Oh my God, we, that didn't, would be for a new one. You know, I mean, right. I, I know. Didn't Cruise jump in there for a minute? Didn't Tom Cruise jump oh, yes. in there? Yeah, yeah he did. Yeah, yeah. 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 But so you like you like what you're saying is you like you like the you like those big huge fun Hollywood tentpole movies as well because you did a bunch of them. You'd like yeah. to do one of those again? Like those yes. are fun to do. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah. I would. I, I like the broad mass appeal and, yeah. and popcorn and stuff. It's everything I'm for because I have three kids, 16, 18, and 20 now. Wow. And, you know, I made so many of these choices to, I'll admit to some personal vanity to try and impress them, but they're yeah. kids. And I learned that they're like, no, I want to watch Power Rangers. You're boring. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, that bubble got burst. But the point is, I, I know that so many people who watched that film all have kids of their own sure. now. Yeah, and yeah. It, it becomes um, a part of their personal mythology their culture right. that they bring right. with them and and I, I i that could not have been impressed upon me earlier um more so than it is now and you know and going forward just to answer your question i'd like to participate in however that gets put on the screen again if it's a mummy or something else i yeah. I, I, I i guess it's a toss-up between doing something i really care about like the whale and yeah. something that is you know has broad appeal and and, uh, yeah, and ideally do both as you, as you were as you were doing it worked yeah. and you were kind on. of doing that and you were doing that you yeah. were doing that yeah you i remember you did gods and monsters with yeah, with ian mckellen which so is a good great yeah. but but film. robert uh, robert de niro says that isn't he famous for saying uh, uh one for me three for them one for me three for them <laughs> i don't know he's kind of famous for a lot of things Sean. i mean let's yeah, be no, honest that's, that's not what he's famous for just yeah no that's, that's he may no, have famously you're, you're said me, but he's not famous are you looking at me you talking to me you must be talking to me because i didn't see anybody else talking to me you're talking to me me. Hey, a little bit, a little bit, you know, a little bit. Yeah, good. Well, remember, remember a little yeah, bit. Little no, bit. good. You guys have seen my, you guys have seen my De Niro, right? Oh, will you give us some more? Yeah, yeah. A little, no, I'm, you know, I'm not going to do a lot, but I might give you a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> we love the cheap stuff here, Brendan. Mm -hmm. We sure do. We're just having fun here. We're cheapies. It's a, um, it's a Thursday morning, and we're and we're trying to do our best to uh, have hey, fun. Punchy. Do your kids, your, your kids have any uh, uh, I was dreams, ask the same aspirations? Thing. I was going to say that. Yes. The same thing. They're creative. They? Yeah. Um, yes. My, my, my youngest picked up a guitar and he can seriously shred. I'm like, wow. Um, mm. And he is studying music theory. He's only 16. So, wow. That's Leland. And um, Holden, my 18 year old son, is interested for sure in acting and uh he's going to study i don't want to say the name of the university sure. he's going to go to but i'm really very excited for him he got an early acceptance as a college uh, oh good for senior, you dad so That's it's nice happy going. days now yeah and my oldest son is is griffin he's uh, a special needs kid he's rated on autism spectrum and he's the best version of himself that he ever always was and uh -huh. he's just nice. the manifestation of That's great. love that keeps us all together and, and really great. just gives me the understanding the reason why do you, we even run around chasing our tails doing this crazy stuff because yeah amen now are yeah. they all three in the house with you there you guys all live up there uh, no i mean uh, the, the two younger guys they live in greenwich with their mom and yeah. um they, they're always over here I, yeah I have, I have laundry to prove it and broken windows and stuff, so. <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i'm so glad laundry. i got two girls boys will oh, keep you busy right wow I mean, well you know what i had a friend who had three girls and he called them the fight club <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wow. yeah. There is there is an age there where they 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 really learn their instrument. Um. <laughs> I've got uh, I've got three boys myself, Brendan. So but they're a little bit younger, and uh, but we're it's a it's a zoo here every morning. <laughs> and uh, have they taken you to the emergency room yet? Well, uh, oh God, might have. Yeah, yeah, right. You have. Oh God. Oh yeah. In yeah. my family, we had to have a punch card. You know, right. Three, you get one free. Right. It was stitches. Yeah. Just once for me with uh, with Franny, but uh, yeah, with boys, I hear it's 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 annual. 
right? My, mm-hmm. my oh, Archie, the, Archie and Abel, the lot of lot of stitches, but but how I should be pointing out that both of them are snitches, and I had warned them. <laughs> I had warned them because everybody knows. Listen to that, Daddy. Well, I just know that they know the, that snitches get stitches, and that that's a. Thing. You've ever it's you. another thing I, you learned at Juliet, uh, right? Well, this yeah, is Uncle Brendan has also been to jail. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. And we always said that in Canada, growing up in Rosedale in Toronto. And this comes all the way back around to Sean's kid. Ricky got yeah. stitches after the tumor came out, put yes. in a jar, and uh, mm-hmm. but now go, it's uh, kitchen. it's it's flamed up again. Then, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, oh, and it it, it fell in because he and Scotty was cooking up a big pot of. Uh, Pork and beans, <laughs> and it <laughs> fell in, in a big no. sloppy pot. Well, of like, pork what and is beans. that? He gave it a little kick. Uh, yeah. Gave it a little kick. <laughs> sure. <laughs> and they have Sean. Last time you had pork and beans. Be honest. I literally just had barbecued pork sandwich yesterday for lunch. Nice. Oh Doesn't count. God. I mean, a big pot of beans, and then you and you slice up some hot dogs and, and toss well, them. Well, that'll happen this week. How good does that sound? <laughs> so good. <laughs> no, 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 no. And mac and cheese. Uh, Brendan Fraser, we have taken up way too much of your time, but gosh, it's so fun getting to know you and and. It's it's so very happy for you, man. Yeah, yeah it's Thank really you. such a great story to to see you. Congratulations on Thank all you. the success you've had with this yeah. film and the nominations through the roof for everything, Academy Award, BAFTA, everything. And the but best news of all, you look exactly the same. And you do look exactly <laughs> the same as you did twenty years ago. Yeah, you look you terrific. Do. You got a great <laughs> outlook on life, and it's just what a joy to have you, man. Thanks, guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah man, I'm good really luck happy going to forward. be your guest. Thank you. And yeah. Oh, wait. And Will, I just want to tell you. Um, Here comes your note. When Holden was like probably six or seven years old, I think it was when the Lego Batman movie uh-huh. was yeah. on, and he loved it so much. And he would quote you when you, as Batman said, that he doesn't wear black, just dark shades of just shades of gray. How is? Do you remember that? Line? I only work in black, and sometimes, sometimes gray. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what the quote is. Dark, people, dark, very dark some, gray. Some shades of gray. <laughs> some shades of You know what? It's funny that, 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 um, it's funny you say that, Brendan. So this morning, all four boys were having breakfast because I have three sons and a stepson, and they're all having breakfast. And uh, Denny, my two and a half year old, he's drinking his uh, milk out of a cup. It's got Superman on it. And he looks at it Uh-oh. and he looks up at me and goes, That you, Dada? And I go, no, no, that's Superman. Uh, (laughs) I didn't get that one. Three callbacks, though. Yeah, it was pretty good. Um, Listen, dude, again, what a pleasure. Please say say hi to your son for me uh, from Lego Batman. Uh, And uh, And we'll we'll, we'll, we'll see you. I don't know when this airs, but an early, hopefully, congratulations on the Oscar. Yes. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Uh, All All right, pal. Thanks, pal. Be well. Bye, you too. You. Thanks, pal. You too. Thanks. Bye, bye. bye Brendan. Bye. Bye, buddy. How great. Uh, what You know, you said it, Will. There's a good story there, and, uh, you know, it's there's too many bad yeah. stories in this world and in this business. That is uh, that is a real piece of good news right there. It really Glad is. I'm really happy for And him. also, like, it's such a story, like, if you, you know, for actors, wherever you are in your career, if it, if it's the thing you love to do, and it doesn't have to be acting. You just keep doing it. It doesn't like you come and go. Everything ebbs and flows. Except and... with Chinese food, you Chinese. know, just because it tastes yeah. good doesn't it mean me. you need to finish I mean, it. Does Sean, oh, Sean did go the other the day though. Thing. He he went back to. He told me about. I this. found a chinchin that was open. Remember, I thought it was closed. You don't need to text <laughs> us with that. Okay, we, we weren't we weren't Sean wondering. Text goes, hey, the chinchin on Sunset still open. I'm like, yeah, yeah no, I yeah. didn't know. Got it. What, are, you, are you angry because you're jealous? Yeah. No, but it was the same reaction of like the toothless old prospector who's like in the river all day. Like, I found one. There's gold. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, so happy I texted you both. And, and the toothless community, don't come after me for that. But <laughs> I just. <laughs> They're pretty big. But listen, you know, look, I, he's pro- I, I again, I don't know when this is going to air, but. I, I'm sure the Oscar goes too, right? I mean, I, I think that performance so. is incredible. At a, at a, he'll have a very good seat at a minimum. Yeah, uh, there at yeah. the ceremony. Yeah. It, it is. It is true. It is so nice to see a guy who seeming like such a nice guy. And Sean, I agree with you. It's it's that he has kind of just continued to do what he does and be yeah. himself and blah blah blah. And sometimes 
sometimes the the stars align and the world catches up with you, and sometimes it doesn't. Doesn't, you're and doing you just your keep thing, going. And then you well, just like, keep look what going. happened. Remember, remember uh, John Travolta when uh, Quentin Tarantino yeah. put him in uh, Pulp Fiction was like, yeah, great, welcome. Well, that's, yeah, well, that's why I wanted to say to him, like, does it? I, you hate calling it a comeback because because in John Travolta's case too, he must have been like. I'm still the same still here, yeah. guy. Right. right. It's yeah. just they got another opportunity at a very high profile project. Yeah, it's just a high, yeah, it just matters how high, high and then profile. And then every once so, so that happens, or if you're an actor and it's not working out, you move towards directing because people aren't responding to your acting anymore. Right. So That's you, a shot. So That's a shot at me, Sean. Here it comes. Here it because, comes. Because Wait, as I people a... watch you, they're like, no. <sighs> Enough. We can't Wait. see it anymore. <laughs> not the face anymore. Uh, not, not Get the behind face. the camera now. <laughs> no more no, 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 no face. <laughs> Wait, Will. When you guys were talking about the places you were in in Canada, yeah, yeah. Could you get Could you get oh, there comes, like by well. driving or like or, walking, or is there like Could you like Is there another way you could get there? Don't like, go high. Riding, Don't go high by riding a. Bye. I... Um, Will's gone high. Will's gone high. You can't do it without going high, right? Bicycle. Bye. <laughs> or maybe buy a biplane. Um, or. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that was a nice you, fizzle. You, <laughs> you're really good. And, <laughs> and musicgram. Smart. Smartless is 100% organic and artisanally handcrafted by Michael Grant Terry, Rob Armjarv, and Bennett Barbaco. Smartless.